Okay, fam, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over the Bitcoin miners and Bitcoin and the alts a little bit, but not too much. So with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so first thing I want to go over here is actually the, uh, <clears throat> and again, we usually we're not going to cover this in this video or one of, one of these minor videos. Usually we only do this when we talk about Bitcoin, but I do think it's kind of relevant right now. So uh, we're getting a kind of sideways chop on the Bitcoin dominance and the altcoins are starting to fly. So that's uh, definitely a good sign. Even even the positions that we don't actually have, but we have them in the watch list uh, are starting to really move a lot. They were up a lot more earlier in the day. I think the, uh, the calibration for these reset, I think they reset on a daily basis or something like that. I'm not sure. So they were actually up. Uh, the, the percentage gains were, were much larger than what you're seeing right now. Um, but yeah, I'll just, I'll show you guys a couple quick examples so you can see. So Algorand is going absolutely stupid. Do I think it's done here? No, I do not. Um, Algorand's all time high for the last cycle was like $3 or something like that. So this is, just, yeah, this right here is nothing. Uh, Horizon's starting to move. Litecoin's had a ex very explosive move. So that could signal maybe an early move for LCCN on Monday. We'll have to wait and see about that one. Uh, Filecoin's starting to move. I mean, they're all starting to move quite a bit. AIOZ has already started moving. Um, but the point I want to make here is that we are seeing somewhat of an alt season right now uh, because of the Bitcoin dominance pulling back. I don't think Bitcoin is done running to the upside yet. I think we're going to see Bitcoin probably around 120 to 140,000 by the end of next month. Um, and then uh, th this is, I kind of see this as like an inner, inner, interim uh alt season so this is like the alt season before the alt season like the big one that you want i think that's right around the corner i think that's probably going to start in january uh maybe february something like that but for now you know bitcoin's kind of just chopping around under a hundred thousand uh giving way to the alt season and then eventually uh bitcoin probably between sometime between now and next month will probably start popping to the upside above a hundred thousand, I would think. Okay, so uh, we are still adding um, alts, the uh, CLSK position. We're still adding to that as well as Coney. All right, so um, before I get into the miners, I actually did want to show you guys this once again, and we'll talk about this more deeply in a separate video. But we're pretty much treating this as a position trade. So we have we have two sides to this tr this particular stock um, in terms of trades. Okay, so we have the actual shares. Uh, which serves as a strictly a position trade. Um, and you guys are probably wondering, well, why didn't you do cash secured puts on this? Well, it's pretty simple because, um, I mean, you guys can see on the weekly candle, even if we put a cash secured put in at like, you know, $13 or whatever, uh, we wouldn't have got filled because it immediately came back up. Again, you, if you understand the charts, technical analysis, stuff like that, you would know that, uh, once you see a golden cross like this, there's a pretty good chance, even if you put a cash secured put on at this particular time, you may not get filled. So we just decided we didn't want to risk it. We were going to buy the shares straight off the market uh, and do a buy right instead where we just buy the shares and then sell cover calls later. Maybe we might do that. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, but again, this is a flip zone. So resistance turns support. We are buying this as a position trade. We are expecting this big green box here to hold. Uh, you can see this is actually a major level here. So it did hold uh, twice before the really big explosion in the last cycle on CLSK. It was held down after a rip and then it um, ultimately did serve as support kind of before the final um, peak for Bitcoin and crypto in November of 2021. And then eventually it flipped and it served as the, uh, this is the swing high or bear market swing high for uh, Bitcoin in the crypto space before eventually dumping down into the, into the abyss that everybody hates, you know, when everybody gets their heads dumped on by 80, 90%, uh, please don't be that guy. I can't tell you guys what to do with your money. And you know, when it looks like these things are topped out, I'll be sure to let you know, but I can't force you to hit the sell button. So all I can say is please don't be that guy, not financial advice, but, um, you know, nobody really wants to lose their shirt in the market. Uh, that is the same for a reason. So yeah, anyways, we're just treating this as a position trade. The total, uh, capital invested in this is 13,500. We are actually considering putting in more. I'll tell you guys right now, we're probably not going to add any more until, 
Um, I shouldn't say until, um, unless it gets back in the screen box. Okay. If it gets lower in the screen box, like 1250, 13, we might add more, but, uh, considering it's really literally right next to our cost basis, we're probably not going to touch it. We're probably just going to sit on the shares and let it ride because at some point it doesn't really make sense to buy anymore. Like, you know, in this case, it, it would make sense with our cost basis to buy it like eight to 10, maybe $12, but having dragged it down from 2350 to 1660, uh, it doesn't really make sense to buy at 1510 because it's not really going to move the average down a whole lot. So, but again, these things can fluctuate a lot in a single day in terms of price. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into the actual charts here. We got a lot of these to cover. So Mara is looking absolutely fantastic. Uh, we already went over accumulation blocks in previous videos, but you got this inverse head and shoulders and it's really not so obvious because this is not really textbook. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to spot something like this. This is not really a head and shoulders pattern, but it did play out like that. Uh, so the target was 24 that got hit obviously as you can see um, I'd say this one's a little expensive um, so okay so I'm just I'm just gonna run down the list before we go over the technicals so you guys can know because I'm sure you want you want to know well which ones are which ones are cheap and which ones are are expensive well it's it's pretty simple guys <laughs> when it's when it's at in a green box that means it's cheap okay when it's in a red box that means it's expensive. Um, as you guys know, we made that mistake on CLSK back here. We were trying to put in cash secured puts back here. We should have, uh, probably waited or at least had it a little bit further out of the money where, uh, we could get a lower strike price. So, uh, Mara is a little bit expensive. I, I would say Riot is still somewhat cheap. Um, not sure if it's going to get a pullback with this triple golden cross here. Once the EMA is crossed, that's usually a pretty strong sign that it's going to keep moving up. Uh, CLSK is about to get that same thing. Although I would say CLSK is still actually quite cheap if I'm being honest. And I mean, you know, it, it could go up another $8. It could go up another $18. I think the, uh, previous cycle high was like 40 bucks. Uh, HUD eight is, well, it's in between the two zones, but I would say it's actually quite expensive because it has already moved a lot off these EMAs. You can see from the last time it touched the EMAs, it went from 12 to 26, uh, doesn't mean it can't go higher. It broke this high up here. So uh, maybe worst case scenario, it comes back to fill that gap right around where those highs are at 20. You can get an entry there. Uh, that might be considered cheap. Uh, but I would say this one's actually still pretty expensive. Uh, Cypher, yeah, yeah, it's a little expensive. I'd be waiting for a pullback into the green zone on this one if I was going to get it. That's just me. Uh, BTBT, I would not... I would not buy this one right now um, because again, it is hitting resistance. Uh, it's it's always possible it could just break out of there and keep going up. But you know, if you're worried about a dump here from a dump from here down to here instead of a breakout, then it may be wise just to wait for a confirmation move above and then a retest back into this flip zone before taking off. Uh, BITF, I would say that this one is still actually very cheap. I mean, it literally has just been sitting in this green box forever. Uh, this is probably the best one in my opinion so far other than the CLSK. Um, Iron's, yeah, this one's, I don't know. It seems like fair, fair value at this point. It's pretty close to the EMA. It's kind of in between the zones, not really overbought or oversold. Uh, same thing with Hive. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the same thing here on Hive. Pretty much no man's land on this one. Uh, I'd say Wolf could be a pretty good buy, although I would, Probably be waiting for maybe a pullback into these highs right about 570 somewhere in there. Okay, so in terms of Mara, um, you got your zones here for the buys at 18 to 20, roughly about 20 bucks. Okay, targets could be anywhere from 29. Um, if we're going all the way out to, let's say, maybe these things top out in January, February, somewhere in there, roughly about 60 bucks um, before maybe having any kind of pullback. I mean, it's possible. I mean, it is, uh, it's already moved up a lot right now, but it wouldn't look nearly as ridiculous as if it went to 60 bucks. That would be a really, really, really godlike candle. Okay. So 234% potential there. Um, riot the, so this is a falling wedge pattern. You guys already know the target for this is the top of the wedge. So in this case, that would be 
I don't know why Trading View keeps doing that. Um, that would be right around the top of the wedge. So that's roughly about 1830, 1840, somewhere in there. But of course, the swing high is uh, back here in the 20s. Now, I will say this, okay? When you get a swing high like this, if Riot gets past this, this 20, 20 ish dollar level, it's absolutely going to smash to the upside to 35 to 40. Once it gets past, yeah, probably about 20 to 23, it's going to rip straight up because there's pretty much nothing in between that. There's no resistance whatsoever. So probably expect some serious God candles after that. Okay. So buy zones here. Um, I'd say as of right now, the top of the support to the EMA is so about 950 to 1050, somewhere in there targets 1874 to uh, 21 bucks, 125% move. So, you know, it could come back and test the EMAs, which again, based on the golden cross, probably not likely, but the reason why I say it could potentially, you know, fat chance maybe test the top of the zone is because it can always get a wick below the EMAs before eventually getting sucked back up and just going straight back up. Um, that's kind of what the EMAs are there for is to serve as a support zone for the bulls. So, you know, when the bears try to push it down or people are selling their shares or whatever, uh, it creates that selling pressure, which then gets bought up on the EMAs. Um, and again, uh, if you guys don't think the EMAs are relevant, we actually use the EMAs in some cases for both swing trading options and day trading futures. So yes, it is a very relevant tool. Um, right. This one looks like, or not right. Uh, sorry, CLSK. So this one looks like it's absolutely about to explode up. And I, I'm not just saying that because we have a position in it. I'm saying it also because the technicals, you have three sets of golden crosses here just about to get the blue and the yellow EMA crossing golden. You guys already know our swing trade strategy. That is the signal right there to get in. Um, and we had a nice fat wick straight off the EMAs. Okay. And CLSK has kind of been bipolar the last week and it ended like this. I would say that's pretty bullish. So, um, if there is a potential pullback here, 1240 to 1380 would be the buy area. And then it could go anywhere from 2150 to 24. Uh, looking out a little bit further in time, if it goes out to kind of the start of January, this thing could, yeah, maybe top out like around 40, 42 bucks, which again, pretty much lines up with the previous cycle high up there, as you guys can see. Uh, could it go higher than that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anything is possible in crypto. I'm not going to discount that this thing could go up to $100, $200, especially when Trump's in office and he creates the, you know, oh, we want all the Bitcoin mined in America and we want the national Bitcoin reserve and all that jazz. I mean, who knows what that's going to do the miners. Okay. So 235% here, uh, hut eight, I would say maybe be looking for a pullback kind of in these candle tops. Like I said, right around 20, uh, maybe you get a wick down to 18. If you're lucky, uh, 27 to 32 is going to be the targets here. So worst case scenario, about 65%, best case scenario, 90%. Uh, cipher. So kind of a similar thing here. I'd be, I mean, it, it did pull back into these candles. You can see this wick here. And of course it bounced off the EMAs too. So pretty sure those candles are going to hold, but if for whatever reason they don't, they come back and retest the EMAs. It'd be about five to five sixty, uh, And then the targets would be about 1020 to 1060 for the next resistance level, about 102% gain. BTPT. Uh, I, I'll be honest, this thing kind of coiling upwards like this while it's still sitting above the EMAs does kind of make it look like it wants to break out of the zone, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I'd say for now, the buy areas would be anywhere from 313 to 390. Uh, targets, I'd probably put it at about 490 to about 580. Because again, the price action is just simply too close to the bottom of the zone right now. So uh, potential maximum move here about 84%. And again, like we told you guys back here in April earlier this year when, you know, Bitcoin and crypto were going into a consolidation, uh, when it was at these levels down here in this green box, that was the best time to buy. Okay. In my opinion, now is not the best time to buy, um, unless we flip this level and it does turn into support, which we need to see some price action for that. Uh, BITF, this is a golden opportunity. This is like BTBT, BT, in my opinion, back in April 2024, except you get the opportunity again in the current day. Uh, so it's literally the perfect area to buy in. We're just now getting the golden cross on the MACD. Um, if you choose not to take advantage of it and it goes up 
Uh, again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to spook anybody into buying these. You don't have to, if you don't want to, no pressure, right? Uh, we don't even own these, but, um, I'm just saying the opportunities there, you know, strike, maybe consider thinking about striking while the iron's hot. Uh, if the opportunity presents itself, which in this case it did. Okay. So two to two forty here at support targets three to uh, three sixty. could be looking at as high as four bucks on this one. Nice clean two X. So as much as about 97, I'd say about 100% gain. Okay, Iron, so we have this dragonfly candle here. Um, a, basically, a hammer candle would be where the, where the body closes at the exact top, and there's just a wick down. There's nothing at the top except the candle, but in this case, that's not the case. This is a different candle. It's a, a dragonfly candle. And this is also a bullish candle, by the way, um, when it's a green one pointing up like that. Okay, so all the indicators are bullish uh, we got another dip by opportunity back here but if you didn't take advantage of it well we've just covered this recently but i mean you know the the opportunity is uh, unfortunately moved by now so uh, possible buy areas right now eight to about 10 1320 to about 18 for targets here about 123 percent gain hive uh, same thing, no man's land. I mean, maybe it comes back down the green box. I don't know. It's above the EMAs, but again, it did that before and then came back down below the EMAs. So it's hard to say at this point. Uh, although these candles are higher than these ones. So that is a series of higher highs and higher lows. It could just go higher. So I'd be looking maybe anywhere between probably about 215 to 350, somewhere in there for a buy. Uh, 575 to 760. 245% gain. Last one, Wolf. Uh, so if you get lucky enough to get it back down here at the bottom of this channel, then it would be, in my opinion, the buy, the buy area would be anywhere from four to, I would say, maybe kind of the tops of these candles right here. So about four to 590, somewhere in there. Uh, so for targets, because this thing has pretty much already breached all the highs before basically going to the Ultima's, I would say maybe... The next area potentially of resistance here might be kind of around this $16 area somewhere in there. So you can see we held it here during the bull market as resistance. And we also held it here during the bear market uh, as also resistance. Imagine that. So if it gets past that level, it's probably going to fly up to the moon. But regardless, even if it just does get to that level, that's still a massive gain. So 263% gain. So the best miners to do options based on my personal experience here is Mara, Riot, CLSK, and HUD8. Those have some pretty good premiums. Uh, if you are looking for call debit spreads, do your research on those. They're a little bit more complicated. Uh, spreads of any kind is more complicated than the, your typical wheel strategy, cash secured puts and cover calls. Uh, and they are leverage plays. And it's, it's, in my opinion, very important to understand what you're doing when you do these. Uh, so we do still have those as well, but, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm just saying, um, if, if you, the other thing about call debit spreads is if you wanted to do call debit spreads, like large amounts, like have some of these positions, like 26, uh, spreads, 85 spreads, 125 spreads, something like that. You want to probably be looking for miners that have a lot of liquidity, and I'm going to just use clean spark as an example here because we do have some spreads on these. So I'll show you what I mean. And again, I, this is related to the miners. This is part of the reason why I'm showing you guys this. So we have our strikes for this one set in January. If we don't get, if we don't get the targets we want by January, we'll probably just close them out and then throw some new ones on for like March or June or something like that. We're not going to, uh, we're not going to budge on what we want here. So, uh, this is what I mean right here. Okay. Open interest. So if we were going to do a hundred contracts, we want to make sure that there's a lot of open interest. So you got 8,000 there at 2250, uh, 25 here, this one really a lot, 23,000. So you'd want to look for something like that, probably in the thousands of, uh, of different contracts available on the market to scoop up if that's what you wanted to do. So, uh, but yeah, we're just, we're treating uh, CLSK like a, position trade. And like I told you guys, these whales and institutions with these millions and billions of dollars, this is literally what they do. We're showing you guys this in real time. Okay. Uh, and they trade with 
typically speaking, large size, very large size. And the Bitcoin whales, they do it too. Uh, so yeah, the, the, and we've gone over position trading in a separate video. You guys can go check that out if you want to. Um, but basically the gist of what they do is they use TA in combination with maybe like fundamentals on a company, just making sure it's a decent quality company or there's some reason to be in the trade. And they literally just wait for either the market to get oversold or to position in at a buy zone and then get out at a sell zone or whatever the case may be. Maybe like, you know, holding it for one or two years. It depends on the trader, but uh, that's usually kind of how they operate, how they do that. All right. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Peace.